He is back, baby! Oh my god, so many characters! It's like it's like an action figure fest on the book of Boba Fett. <laughs> Boba Fett's taking the back seat to everybody and might be okay for now. Welcome everybody to the Mando Fan Show. I'm John. Thanks for joining us. So excited to talk about chapter six from the desert comes a stranger uh written by john favreau and dave filoni directed by dave filoni uh with me as always is james and din Djarin. uh how you guys doing i could bring you in warm or i can bring you in cold is it warm or cold in your helmet right now <laughs> it's very steamy i feel my breath <laughs> it's lukewarm <laughs> there you go. perfect just like inside of a tauntaun uh and that voice you just heard if you're listening on audio and you aren't live for some reason with us our guest the lead singer of the band danger kids he's also a popular twitch streamer uh obviously a big star wars fan of course yes. welcome to the show andy bain what's up man nothing much thank you guys for having me man i appreciate it dude very excited very excited uh, to have you um to our audience who are in the live chat Thank you uh, so much for being here with us. If you are on Twitter or Facebook or wherever you're on social media and you see our post that we're live, if you don't mind quote tweeting and retweeting it, getting it out there to let your followers know to come on in, join the party, because uh, this is one beast of an episode. <laughs> so much so that we're not even doing our Easter egg segment on this episode, because Andy, as you put it, what did you say? I said, I, I think this whole episode was just Easter eggs. Like the whole the thing. The whole thing. <laughs> the whole thing is one giant Easter eggs. Uh, we'll cover yes. them whether so, we like it or not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we wanted to spend more time on our main discussion, uh, but we are going to rate the episode and stuff like that. But uh, if if you uh, want to, we do have the super chats available if you want to make sure that your comment is read on the show and we react to it. Um, but just uh, sit back and have a good time. Pour yourself a drink, whatever you got. Uh, have fun in that live chat and uh, enjoy the show. So um i'm i'm pretty excited to get into this uh we are going to rate this episode uh on the well we'll get to it in a minute but usually it's the tamara morrison face scale but the problem is boba fett's been a lot more like boba fett these past couple of episodes not saying much <laughs> and not really on screen much uh but that's okay um each of us will rate the episode zero to ten halves count then we'll give our average and then we'll check in with our patrons and see what they rated this thing uh, we might be in for some high scores, I think. Uh, Lacey, we're going to start this week with you. Um, what'd you give this episode? Zero to ten. So everyone online was wondering what my score was. I got messages at like 6 a.m. being like, what would Lacey rate this episode? I give it a ten. Oh, wow. <laughs> because obviously it's a super pack show. Uh, I gave in and I was like, you know, it's a ten. I think that my second favorite is obviously the last episode. And I think the direction and the overall technical shots and everything of the last episode were the best. However, the story in this one was the best. So 10 out of 10. Uh, Luke Skywalker is back. It is insane. He looks so good. So good. Grogu's he back. Does. Cobb's back. Cad Bane is here. It's like the party it was like oprah you know it was like you, you're a cameo you make a cameo you make a cameo <laughs> right and i was just like it, it was so much overload <laughs> i watched it four times at this point and it still shocks me that we got that much in the episode right yeah. off the bat uh yeah it, it, there's so much to get into including the improvements they made in such a quick period of time from mando to book of boba fett with how luke looked but uh let's roll on with our ratings andy what did you give so chapter six i i gave it an 8.5 but andy, that's a very good score I that's know, a very good I score know. i just met you five minutes ago how dare you <laughs> so it's hard for me to give anything a 10 out of 10 because like i feel like it could has no room for improvement right right i would have said nine so i lowered it by a half point just because i feel like we're in so deep and they have one episode left to do all of this stuff. <laughs> I feel like the pacing could have been slightly better previous episodes, not this episode. I think this episode was great. But like mm -hmm. overall, as the book of Boba Fett, I had to drop down another half point. So, hey, eight five is a very high score. Uh, so uh, there's not. Yeah, it's nothing to uh, smirk. It's okay, at. I understand. Sometimes it's hard to be wrong. Well, you have a Again, rivalry met him five it's hard to be humble ago. when you're perfect you know? <laughs> um james 
where uh, where are you? We got we got a ten, we got an eight point five, now we got we a got nine point five. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, I wow. yeah, I mean you guys know my history of like writing specific episodes, although I've made kind of changes. I was like looking at that season two, episode one of Mandalorian, and I think at the time I gave it an eight point five, and since then I've been like, nah, man, that's a nine or nine point five. Like that's that's exactly what I wanted out of the series and stuff. So I've kind of like shifted a little bit, but I'm looking at all the episodes that I've named like the best of this series so far. And I'm like, am I really going to say that this one didn't, I don't know, do everything that we, I wanted, yeah. you know, I was like, and we'll probably get into more why I think this episode was so great, but really, really, man, it's just like what little bit you were saying, Andy, like there, there can always be that improvement. There can mm -hmm. always be the perfect episode that exists. That to me is that 10. And I'm like, I don't know, man, I, I you know, ne next week, I want to see that if that finale completely pays off. And this is like a 9.5, a slow 9.5, mm -hmm. like a slow burn movie that you love. But then there's that for that, that great, like action pack 90 minute, perfect, comedy or, or action comedy or whatever you know what i mean that you absolutely love um that could be that perfect 10 so yep to me so i i just had to land on 9.5 for so many reasons but we'll get into it yeah james is waiting for that episode of ahsoka where the force ghost <laughs> of kane and jarris comes back and uh, <laughs> um james i'm with you man 9.5 similar reason for not going to 10 uh, i am not as brave as lacy I have the fear that I'm going to give something a 10 and then something better is going to come along. I'm going to be then stuck. Then you give it an 11. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, these amps go to 11. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so 9.5 for me. There were a lot of times watching this, I just felt like a kid. Uh, I felt like I was injected with serotonin. Uh, I was not doing a live reaction video, but somehow my hands still found their way to my face. Uh, I was like reacting physically to this and I was watching it by myself. So that's, that's saying something. It, there were just a lot, like, I would just, I don't know. It was a lot of, a lot of feelings, a lot of emotions. And, uh, it just, there was just so much going on mm -hmm. that like a live action Ahsoka was an afterthought to me. Whereas yeah. like a year ago we were yeah. like, Oh my God, live action is so good. And I'm like, Oh, Hey, what's up Ahsoka? How's it going? Cool. <laughs> like there's so much other stuff going on you were like one of those against the tree yeah yeah i was like oh what's I up i think i think it was like chapter four that i i i pinpointed that i'm like i'm watching an episode of star wars right now and it's like the pikes and the huts and that you know what i mean and i was going through and i was listing all these different things but it's like realistically this episode topped it because I wrote it down here. It's it's Cobb Vanth, it's Din Djarin, Luke Skywalker, Grogu, R2-D2, Ahsoka Tano, Boba Fett, Fennec Shan, Black Chris Anton, and Cad Bane. It's like, yeah. what do you want if this yeah. is not like, and it's not like they just threw the characters in. Everything fits. Everything feels good. It was emotional. It moved everything along exactly as you, you wanted it to. And it's just... Uh, it, it's crazy what like what is happening on television and for people that aren't watching it i'm always like hey man you need to check this out because yeah, like right. it's pretty pretty ridiculous like what right. is happening on I, screen no. every week sometimes. we told a friend of ours hasn't started yet we're like just watch last week's episode and he was like <laughs> okay and then he watched it okay i'm in like i was like all right, right. <laughs> and you know people are like well i just don't get it that they're sign lining boba fett and stuff it's like well we'll see how it rounds out but um for rounding out this this is, I believe, uh, we cannot afford interns or archivists. So I'm just going to guess. I think this is our highest rated episode ever. And I this think is, so too. I, I don't still think brought I've ever given a 10. Yeah, I've never <laughs> yeah. given a 10. Oh, and Because yeah. no. when we did chapter 16 of The Mandalorian, we all gave very high scores, but our guest, Stephen Ford, gave it like a 6.5 and then tanked our score. How dare Ooh. you, Stephen? Love you, buddy. Uh, <laughs> but this one, we got a 9.4 between the four of us here. Yeah, uh, in the in the temp scale, right? Or well, no, he hasn't well, been in. Well, right? he you can't do the temp scale. You gotta snap yeah. your finger and go. Bah. <laughs> there it is. 
<laughs> the Cad Skywalker scale, the Luke. Yeah, Kane. that actually sounds like an official scientific scale. The Cad Skywalker scale sounds like an official <laughs> scientific. Like, oh well, on the the Cad Skywalker scale. Well, where, in, in the spirit of Lacey giving Andy a hard time, we should have done all Cad Bane's, and then the last Bane be half of Andy Bane's face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we share the same last name. He's so. half Andy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, we're we're distant cousins, but. <laughs> <laughs> um all right now james let's see uh what our patrons gave this one it looks like they gave this one this one might be our first tie ever a 9.4 yeah. as well from our patrons our first That's tie amazing. ever yeah amazing so let's go to some comments from our patrons on what they think uh first uh i do see her in the chat danny at chibi gone 89 and she's right there this is like the the, the multiple multiple dannys here uh, but it's the same Danny. She said 10 <laughs> Tem faces. The amount of characters that showed up was insane. Uh, so 10 <laughs> from Danny. And then we have Crazy. Jeremy Lucas, uh, one of our newer patrons, I believe relative of George Lucas, uh, said 10 out of 10 best episode of anything ever. Whoa. It's it's very clear now that Mandalorian and Boba Fett and Ahsoka are all one big story. These last two episodes have broken the entire Star Wars universe wide open. Incredible. So thank you for that, Jeremy and Danny, and uh, your support too. Um, all right. Now, I do want to get into and get the, out of the way, the Mando code. But before we do that, Lacey, uh, I know we have a couple of uh, super chats you want to get to, right? We do. Mm -hmm. So first we have Gary, 24 fan. Thank you, Gary, who hey, said... Gary. I needed a drink after this episode. If it keeps this up, I'm going to stock a full bar in my house. I feel that. I had to watch it like in silence somewhat this morning, not to wake the baby. And I was sitting there like, because <laughs> like, I'm just so excited. Um, that's that's a really good point. Gary though. has to get a, a weak way bartender too. That's just required. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. And next we have Cars. What up, JG? What's he up, buddy? said. It's a 10 out of 10. I cried a lot. Middle school me would have never have guessed my favorite characters would appear in live action. Thanks, Filoni and crew. Great Thank point. You, JG. Thank you for your super chat. Great point. Thanks, buddy. And that's all we got for now. I no, saw wait, one I more. Lied. Pop in. One yeah. more. Yeah. Double D, what up, Double D? He said, Favloni, love it, uh, <laughs> is the best thing to happen to Star Wars. I was crying. I was a crying man child during the whole episode. <laughs> love y'all. Keep up the great content. Thanks, I mean, man. I will get to all the Luke stuff, but I was definitely the moment I saw him, I started tearing up again. It's like this just like pure like happiness going home <sighs> childhood. Like, there's my hero. Like, yeah. you see people that cry when they meet celebrities and you're like, oh, that's stupid. But then right. like I'm crying at home at Luke Skywalker. So. Look, that stuff it. sticks with you. Uh, yeah. yeah. No question. Um, all right. So before we get into discussing the episode uh, in depth, in depth, uh, I'm going to give away this week's Mando Code number. So uh, the Mando Code is our season-long giveaway contest. Uh, I have been revealing a number on each episode. And on our episode about Chapter 7 next week, we'll reveal the final number and how to submit your guesses to win the Mando Code bounty. Uh, the grand prize is is a Star Wars Black Series Boba Fett re-armored wearable electronic helmet. I'm not sure if that's the one that you had there, Andy. I um, ju Judging by the name, is the re-armored the new paint job? Yeah, I think it's got so. all the old scuffs and stuff, you know. Battle-worn, yeah. That's um, what I'm guessing, I don't know. Yeah, so it's uh, similar. It's probably the same blueprint, but just with a different paint job on it. But it is the re-armored wearable electronic helmet via the new look that Boba Fett has. Uh, I did reveal the fifth number in the scrambled code last week, so go back and make sure you pick that up if you haven't yet, and all the numbers. But this week, the sixth number in the Mando code is nine. Niner. Hmm. Uh, and, and just so everyone knows, we will not accept guesses before we ask for them. So as Obi-Wan once famously said, don't try it. <laughs> That doesn't even sound like a real quote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, Revenge of the Sith, though. It is. Um, all right. So let's uh, talk it out. Let's uh, get into the main discussion of the show. Um, I like to, you know, warm the tires a little bit here uh, and just point out maybe each of our favorite shot or favorite moment or a line or something like that. So uh, guess of honor, Andy, did you have a, a it's a loaded episode. Did you have one yeah. spot where you were like, Man, that was it for me. That's that's that. So yeah. I I hate that I'm going first because I feel like I might have the same one. I don't, I don't know. I, it's okay. But I mean, 
the heat rising off the sand and a guy in a cowboy hat appears like <sighs> it's cat bane like i had, i did not think he was going to be in it i had no reason to believe that he really would but as soon as you see that it's like that's oh. cat bane coming and then yeah. i thought he looked great i could not agree more on how he looked for sure the um, slow face re- reveal you know oh yes awesome. yeah 100 percent. uh james how about you um man i you know i was debating on a bunch of them but i think ultimately if if we're talking like kind of the wallpaper thing uh there's something about a very asymmetrical shot of luke you know and he's like sitting with his legs crossed and grogu's right in front of him and there's a mat in front of him and then Mm -hmm. there's two choices you know what i mean i was like there's something about just seeing this one image right here that is like, remember when that went down? Like you could look at that image, like it could be up on a wall forever and be like, I remember the moment when Grogu had to make a choice. You know, yeah. I mean? it just was so picture perfect that I was like, man, this is crazy with what we're looking at on screen right now. Right. Uh, and that's how they wrapped up that episode. And it's so good. Yeah. I mean, there's no, obviously there's no wrong answers here, but uh, two good ones right there. Lacey, how about you? Uh, my favorite is definitely going to be Luke Skywalker. Just seeing him in general is amazing. But uh, the shot conversation between him and Ahsoka, where she says so much like your father, was like a punch in the chest. Uh, and then they're kind of overlooking Grogu, who, first of all, I just love how he just eventually is like, I'm just going to lay here, yeah. I guess. Uh, <laughs> but no, the shots there where... They've gotten the mannerisms of Mark Hamill down so good that, like, it looks just, it's nuts how much it looks like him. Yeah, it's um, weird. And just, like, there's just the certain head nods and the eye movement. It's like I'm watching Return of the Jedi. It's insane. And just, I loved the way they talked with each other um, and just kind of the relationship that they had, which we had been, as a group, talking about, are we going to see them meet? And I love what Dave Filoni and John Favreau did here where they're like, well, they met it off camera. You're seeing after the fact, which yeah. kind of feels like you're like, oh, I wish I got to see that. But at the same time, <clears throat> it's a prime example of like the storyteller showing you that you don't need to see it. Like they're showing what you need to see. Um, so I just loved that interaction between them. And it was my favorite part. And I think it's just because everything about Luke in that whole segment was perfect. Everything about him from like his look is everything. And. I know we talk about a lot with uh, CGI and visual effects, like the eyes are usually the first giveaway because they like look a little dead in the eyes, but that wasn't the the case here. (laughs) It was just so, so good Um, to the point that I was getting texts all day about how good Luke looked (laughs) all day. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm in that boat. Uh, There, there was certainly, uh, like a victory fist pump for me seeing Luke and how much better they've made him since the Mandalorian. And I, w- and I was fine how they did it with the Mandalorian. I understood, you know, uh, we had uh, Hal Hickel on. He explained the choices they made and why they did what they did. And I respect that and all the work that they do. So I thought that was great. It was enough for me. And the fact that they took it now to this next level, it's almost like we have to now come to terms with being okay with you know, two years of creepy Tom Cruise TikTok video deep fakes to get to this point where we're getting amazing stuff in Luke Skywalker because they did like Luke looked like they they did a perfect blend of him even like before his car accident and yeah. like they, he just really had that looks like Mark Hamill youthful look and they even updated his hair a bit so it wasn't completely Return of the Jedi hair. Um, yeah, like Kumar's correct here. It. By the way, he commented, "I'm certain they used that deep fake person they hired. They absolutely yeah. did. Yeah, yeah they, they did. absolutely did. Yeah. Um, but my favorite shot is when Luke lifts all the frogs, and Grogu's like oh, looking yeah. around, and Luke's sitting and goes, there, kind of like like he's he's uh like meditating, uh, and but he's also looking at Grogu to see how he's reacting to it. Uh, and and that was enough of a widescreen shot too. I could see that being sort of a and his puppet well. mouth just goes. <laughs> yeah he's like come on in yeah so that was my favorite shot but let's let's talk this thing out let's let's get into this there's a lot to really talk about here i think um the first thing we can uh 
well, have a little fun with is, you know, if people were upset last week about Boba Fett, they're going to carry that on this week and that he showed up for a minute, didn't have one word of dialogue, if any, maybe one. And nope. uh, and that was it. So uh, I'm good to get past that because I think I I had, you know, the Collider report from a year ago or last summer where they said this is we are hearing from lucasfilm sources that this is season 2.5 of the mandalorian and when you go into it that way and know that boba fett was never designed as a lead character you can accept well we got a lot of boba fett they're flushing him out but you know he doesn't necessarily need to be in every frame of every minute and every episode and i don't mind that they've been bringing mando in and stuff like that so i'm cool with that i don't know andy where are you at with that because you have you have a boba fett helmet are you a huge yeah. boba fett guy were you were you pissed that they yeah kind of limited him a bit or what where um so i at the at the forefront i'm just really excited we're getting really good star wars content you know what i mean yeah. so that yeah. trumps everything else for me um i get people's gripes about it and stuff though because like i feel like people liked boba fett so much because he's not in the movies very much you know but it's just like the his like swagger like the way he kind of talks back to vader in a way you know like who yeah. is this oh, guy? Yeah. like he's not scared mm -hmm. of him at all and i mean everyone loved the armor that's why he was so such a big character even having so little screen time and i feel like we have they haven't given that same treatment to boba fett you know what i mean like i feel like man just you, like man. the cool boba fett now and like I, I still really like Boba Fett's story and where it could head and stuff. Uh, I think it's really cool. Him and Mando are very different characters now, and I think that comes with age and everything he's been through and seeing his father die. You know, it's going to change change someone like that. So I get the gripes, but I, again, man, it's just like, it's so good. <laughs> like, yeah. And they, like, in a way, Boba Fett is connected to all these people anyway. Like, you, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's Cobb Banth. Cobb Banth, and we're almost forgetting that he had Boba Fett's armor. And now he doesn't. And now he's more vulnerable without it. And, you know, like Boba Fett is sort of still hovering over everything. And, and he's still connected to all these people in, in, in a certain way. But uh, I don't know, like James Lacey. What, I mean, where, where do you guys even want to begin on like diving into this thing? It's just there's so much like I honestly today, like I tweeted, like I may sit here and just rock back and forth and not know what to say, <laughs> where usually I try to like flush out my points and stuff like it. It, it just it, it was a wild I'd, loaded episode. Yeah, I'd say let's start with Cobb Vanth and Cad Bane. Let's get that out of the way, because a lot of people in the chat are talking about Cad Bane. So let's talk about that and then we can get back to Luke in a little bit. OK, so yeah, Cobb Vanth first. He he does the the badass uh, Marshall thing and confronts the Pikes and mows three of them down mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, says, I don't need spice. I'm not I'm not about that. Yeah. So, John, you you thought there was something in the box and I, I, I didn't say it in our chat, That's... but I thought the same thing. I was like, I was like, OK, so there's something hidden in the box. Lacey was pointed it out to us that spice. it was more like it was spice and rewatching the scene. Now I'm like, oh, it's so obvious he's looking at it and the tipping is not a reveal. It's just him saying, get rid of it. He, he's throwing he's throwing it down right the toilet right. He's getting yeah, rid my... of the drugs. Yeah. And well, yeah. well, every time in Star Wars, there's a little trunk. There's something in it. <laughs> well, they had already done this in a previous episode in the I forget which chapter it was, the one with the train. They had yes. opened up the same kind of wooden yeah, chest and there right. was spice inside of it. I forgot so about that. Yeah. I feel yeah. dumb, but now I've kind of realized <laughs> that the posters that they've been releasing aren't sand. I'm pretty sure they're surrounded by spice. I'm pretty sure that's the aesthetic. Like I don't think it's sand because it's shine. like orangey gold. Yeah. 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 It's all about. I Get gangs fighting over the spice and stuff yeah, yeah. andy did yeah. you think there was something in that box that they weren't revealing yet because i did I'm, i thought there could be but i wasn't putting too much thought into it because like we might not even see what's in it you know the guy yeah. just might just leave you know yeah. um but what i what i liked about that scene i don't want to get too ahead of myself uh was he mowed down three of those dudes like so it shows how and good he's like, Cobb don't, was. don't do it yeah he yeah kept saying he's like you're the smart one right so that yeah. showed how good he was and then <laughs> cad bane shows up and way quicker than him even you know what i mean and so I, asked, I felt like that oh, yeah, yeah. established his skill level and then cad skill levels up here like that's a good point. right yeah yeah and right. i i also like too how fluent he is with his words you know he knows exactly what to say there's like a a specific line where he's like and let's be honest in moss Eisley, just in moss Eisley, just about anything goes you know he's like mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. spelling it out for all the fans like man that place <laughs> yeah. talk about a wretched hive of scum and villainy you know it's mm -hmm. kind of one of yeah. those things he's 
He's really playing and it out, but he's what so he good say? with his words and everything. What, what was his line he repeats? Did he say, think it through? Was yeah, that what think he, it think through. So. Yeah. Yep. I love that. It's such a simple line that you could apply to anybody, but the way he said it to him while pointing that blaster at him yep. was like one of the most badass things I could think of. Someone it's going to be a perfect gif for online <laughs> oh, discussions is... <laughs> about Star before Wars. You say, yeah. Think yeah, it before through. you post that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's just like his, him inserting himself as dominant over that person. Like, think it through. I'm about to kill you. Here's the deal. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so so fast forward to um, the end of the episode where they round that out. Uh, very Western how they did that. But um, Cad Bane shows up. So His teeth. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I, I thought he looked incredible. His voice is so good. Obviously, it's the same person mm-hmm. as Corey Burton. Corey Burton but like, right. it's such a booming kind of like creepy voice oh my god as soon as he talked like spoke i was like huh i don't like this yeah, he's <laughs> i knew that guy. like a villain i knew that yeah. deputy was toast i knew that guy was oh, yeah. oh yeah the moment i saw that guy's face i'm like that guy's you not getting out of this you can't buy the marshal i was like you maybe you should go there. inside maybe <laughs> should go who's inside. this nerd tell me i can't park here like <laughs> it looked like the um it looked like roy from the office like the old yeah. boyfriend <laughs> yeah that guy yeah. um, um so what, no, do you, funny. what do you guys okay. think? The Cad Bane thing, uh, as far yeah. as his look goes, because I've been seeing that all day. People being like, "Hey, I fixed the, I fixed that character and stuff," and I was like, "I don't know, guys. There's a couple things like we're forgetting here. Like, <clears throat> number one, like you're looking at an animated show. So in animated shows, most of the time, all the characters' features, like look at Dooku. You know what I mean? Like." all of the uh, features of a character are a little bit exaggerated because it's a style, right? Yeah. So when you're looking at Cad Bane, like what are, what are some of his accentuating features, uh, features? Oh, he's got a really big hat or he's really, really blue. He's a blue character. So let's over, uh, saturate that blue and make him a a blue Mm -hmm. character. So he stands out on screen and stuff. And I'm like, I don't necessarily know that that's what these characters look like in real life. Uh, it's just that that's we've only ever seen the animated version of him. And so you're like, well, okay, well, let's go back and look at like a Duros in like some of these other things and uh, like live action. There they are a couple a bit more like faded teal. There's a couple in the original cantina scene in Star Wars. But I, I, that's what I'm saying, that they don't look like blue, blue, like animated Cad Bane. Oh, I thought they you were look... saying he was the first one we've seen. Oh, okay, I got you. No, no, no. I'm saying like we're so used to seeing mm-hmm. Cad Bane in that live action setting. What does a Duros look like in real life? Well, we even have an example. They look a little bit more faded like that. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. And the other thing too, that uh, I was noticing is, uh, Oh yeah. And like I said, the hat is a little bit more like normal sized hat. They don't want to have this person come in with a Carmen San Diego and be like, <laughs> <laughs> look at this guy in live action. <laughs> he looks like an idiot. You mean like um, Burt Reynolds and Jeopardy SNL oh, exactly. with uh, yeah. Norm Macdonald, where he's got that yeah. big hat. Poppy hat. You, you see, you see him off in, in the in the distance, and he's all blurry. And then, like the next scene, his hat's like a little bit bigger. And the next scene, his hat, like his hat just keeps getting like exponentially larger. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is, uh, is y- we don't know about age really. Like that could be a Duros thing. The older they get, the more they lose their color. I so agree. that's another argument. And. Okay, he's a little bit bigger. He's in his like 70s or something at this point. Like, give the guy a little bit of credit. Yeah, okay. He was a little skinny in the animated show. Like, when you put the pictures next to each other, I get it. It looks like he has a little bit more uh, weight in the face, but it doesn't. I mean, that's the character (laughs) like 25 years after the last time we saw him. Yeah, yeah. Turd Ferguson. That's right. I was talking about the big hat as well. Yeah. As far as his look, I was like, I don't really know what else you want improvements on other than maybe like his hand. Like they showed his hand go back and I was like, I looked a little glovey, you know, Mm. Uh, but like as far as his face and his outfit and everything, I was like, spot on, man. (laughs) Congratulations. That's about as good as you're going to do bringing Cad Bane to life uh, without it being like believable uncanny valley like take that out of it like full cg character that was like perfect you know right kind of thing right. but like it, making him what what they did i think they did it like exactly with any, with, yeah with any of these animated characters that you bring to live action in anything not even just star wars you have to dial back the ridiculousness a little bit 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, I remember when Clone Wars came out, like it's not only animated, it's like heavily stylized. You know, even Anakin mm-hmm. looks pretty skinny in that. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and like you were saying, it's kind of like they're like caricatures of these characters, you know? Right. So I think I think they did great with them. And uh, yeah, I, just, I thought he looked awesome. Yeah, like it, that's a great point because if they just made a live action version of what Anakin looks like in the Clone Wars, he would not look like a good human being. <laughs> yeah. Like it'd be a weird looking face. Like yeah, I remember so. when people didn't like the art style when Clone Wars came out and then, you know, they came around to it and everything was worth And then it, they yeah. didn't like Rebels and then they came yeah, around to it yeah. and then they didn't like yeah. Resistance and then they came around, to, you know, it's like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Christian does yeah. mention something that made me laugh in the show is when he's like, it's called Freetown now. And he's just like, yeah. Mando's I was like, like, is that a right? correction or <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why it just made me laugh because they're having this serious conversation. The guy's like, oh, it's Freetown. And Mando's Here, here's like, a, this has nothing okay. to do with like, <laughs> so in, I didn't go back to look because I was, I didn't have time today, but in the Weequay's bar was the, was a rib cage of a crate yes. dragon in there? Yes. yes. Or, it was it originally was like, there? No, not oh, original. Well, after they, they killed it. it, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. He added it in, right? Yeah. Yes. Same as and the Jawas adding the skull, <laughs> and then the Jawas to the took the skull. The That's the coolest hood ornament in the world. Like I want <laughs> yeah. that on bar, my car. Like, like dollar bills, right. <laughs> uh, bumper stickers, patches. This guy's like, no, I want a rib cage. In well, my yeah, now we know, like those Jawas. Like when we see that sand crawler, we know it's those Jawas. Um, also, yeah. um, that Weequay bartender. Him and Timothy Oliphant, I forget the name of the guy who plays the weak way, but they were they both were on in Deadwood, Deadwood together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Earl Brown. Love that yeah. 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 That's his name. Yeah. He also played the cameraman Kenny in the original Scream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I forgot all about that. And what's his name from? Uh, uh, we'll do his whole career right now. Uh, something about Mary. He played the brother, Warren. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Beans and Frank's yeah. guy. <laughs> yes. yes. Frank, uh, Frank yeah, and Beans. Yeah. A quick one too. Sunathon just popped in there. He said Freetown was the name that they had in the aftermath book. So I, that's what my thought, thought too is when he said uh, it's Freetown now. We we changed the name or whatever. I was like, is this is this how it was always planned, or is this kind of like how they thought, or is that a correction to them? Oh, Oops, yeah. you're right. We made a mistake. We called it uh, Mos Pelgo, uh, mm-hmm. and it it wouldn't it wasn't it was supposed to be Freetown. <clears throat> so we're now like fixing that error that we're saying the people changed the name of the it town. Could be that, yeah, yeah, it was kind of one of those things. But it for something so small, it seemed odd for them to be like, oh, and also we're gonna fix that little piece of canon right now. You know, it's like you're almost taking like three or four lines of dialogue to to explain that. I'm like, so it feels like it was part of the plan a little bit like it's part of the think, story the overarching yeah. story of you know what they're doing with these characters and stuff but and less of a just a quick correction you know but anyway i feel like thought that, it was interesting that like you in these shows um at least where feloni and favreau are involved i guess all of them so far anyway like, like kenobi may be completely different vibe which i'm actually looking forward to but you can almost guess based on the gallery show we watched like i could picture you know, the rib cage being in the bar, that was Favreau being like, wouldn't that be cool if they took the rib cage and put it inside the sure. bar? And then you have Filoni like, I got to make sure Cad B- Bane's teeth look like this. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> so Favreau comes up with the crazy things like, this is what I want to do with my action figures. And Filoni's like, we have to make sure though that this thing is like that. And I think mm-hmm. them two blending together and how they work together has made this such a cool balance of oh, like, yeah. let's create some new craziness but also make sure the stuff people know we honor that. So they're like, they got that right. They got that good and stuff. So I All feel right. like, I like question oh, of the sorry. night is Cobb Vanth alive. Yeah. 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 It's gotta be alive from Fennec Shan. <laughs> no also- blood. Show their face. <laughs> like- also, that deputy got dusted. Oh, <laughs> like, that dude he's, is he's, dead. He is. He got uh, like four and, shots and, or something. And no one ran over to help him. They're just like over to cop. Get, 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 get <laughs> some stems. Also, stems were in the Falling Order game. That's what you used to heal. Um, so nice. I don't know if they've oh, ever mentioned call. stems before. I love that game. I don't know if they've ever mentioned stems before in like live action or even animated. But yeah, yeah, the the deputy's done. But Cobb has some hope. <laughs> yeah he just took a shot in the shoulder i mean so did rio durant and he died but 
Uh, maybe our Dinians can't take a blaster shot the way that Cobb Vanth can or humans can. So I, I, I think he's alive too because you can't like you can't waste that character. We need a little bit more of him, right? Yeah. His hair yeah. is just so I think he has one of the best hair haircuts, hairdos in Star Wars for the men's side. I'm jealous. He's got great it, hair. It is I funny though, like if you're thinking like if you're gonna if you're gonna kill off a main character or something like that to showcase how powerful Cobb Vanth is, like it wouldn't be the worst or no, I'm sorry, Cad Vane. It wouldn't be the worst to make that person <clears throat> Cobb Vanth, but it feels strange. Like they're clearly setting up that the people of Freetown are going to also fight this fight. So having right. them involved without Cobb Vanth being there in any way would be really strange, I think. Yeah, unless it was one of those like to honor him, but the, like the, Star Wars is very deliberate, and them making sure he got shot in the shoulder to me is he's alive. And like I, I watched it on subtitles on my second viewing, I think, and there was a lot of characters that you can't even hear audibly saying like, "Get the medic, get the yeah, medic," and, and yeah. what you just called it, uh, Andy. Like the stems, they made it yeah. clear, like we're tending to him. He's not like completely greased. He- they also yeah. would have given him a moment too. They would have let him shoot, and then the guy would have come up and he would have been like, "Take him to Freedom Man" or something, you know. And then like, <laughs> well, I wish I still had that freaking armor, man. It was also, <laughs> yeah, exactly. it was also funny because I watched it a second time, and like when you look, so the deputy is the one that pulled the gun first, and you see yep. him kind of fidget with it, and cad shoots him once and waits like a solid two seconds and then shoots that guy three times three or four times so that guy took like three seconds to get his gun out of his holster like he like never got it out it's so funny he's yeah. getting shot they, still struggling he told him to wait inside the guy didn't listen yeah you, you can't buy the marshal like shut <laughs> up it was it reminded me kind of of uh solo oh How? when han like spouts off oh yeah yeah, like, yeah, yeah. at emphasis yeah. Yeah. And and uh, and you're getting that uh, look. That could give him the like, look, like yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like, "What are you doing right now?" Right. I so, thought I was doing this. Speaking of dead, <laughs> Michael in the chat asks, "But did we lose Jennifer Beals?" Yeah, I think she's done. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I think she gone, gone. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, same kind of deal. It's weird, like we didn't see her die on screen, or we see her face, or anything like that. But I feel like just the way there, the the story was told there, it was very clear that. Um, but I feel like kind of a waste. Like she had a couple lines, and she, I don't know that that doesn't yeah, that not seem every a little character strange. Needs an arc, I know, but why bring in a character to that degree? Like, you want to kill off the like mayor's domo or whatever? Yeah. You know, in the same way, I'm like, oh, okay, he's dead, dead, he's gone. But it felt, didn't it? Did it not feel like that character had more of a standing, more of a story to tell? A bigger yeah, character they've, in the long run. They've been back to that bar like three or four times in the series. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now it's gone. <laughs> yeah, so and all like, she's what done has been like, I'm just conveying the information our bosses want us to do. You know, but like mm-hmm. in a very, con- I mean, we've had so many predictions over that character. <laughs> As to like, oh, there's something up with that storyline. And it's like, they just blew her up and that's it. Or because there's only one chapter left, they're crossing off red herrings being like, you know, you thought it was her. Guess what? Yeah, it's not. not. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And just giving the pikes like you, you're, you were vested in that character. Clearly um, a lot of people were giving uh, another reason to hate the pikes. They go in there, they friggin Terror, terrorist bomb the the that club thankfully as brian pointed out as many others did max rebo uh took a personal day <laughs> yeah his day yeah but i did have to comment or read this comment from donner who said in one big flash it was her last dance ah uh, well done yeah <laughs> Maybe what that's what saved her. Maybe she had that bucket of water in the chain and put the fire <laughs> in there. Who knows? <laughs> oh, Brian Ward just left the chat to go create that. Uh, yeah. I'm sure. um, yeah. So, but yeah, so solid amount of death in this episode. Um, but in terms of uh, Mando. How'd you guys feel about Mando in this episode? I, I I felt like it was a little strange because 
he he goes there and he, he gets to talk to Ahsoka. And he had to go there to set up the choice at the end of the episode. I, that I, I I agree with, but I think also and sleep like, on a bench. At his bench, yeah. <laughs> but I, I also feel like it was there to also build up the almost reunited with Grogu, but not yet. And just like just trying to like get get that sort of uh, appetite going again to get them back together mm-hmm. and, and like to keep the him leaving at the end uh, with Luke uh, at the end of the Mandalorian season two to keep that, keep that like value there. Because if he just reunites with them this quickly, it, there's not as much of a payoff. If they wait till Mandalorian season three, maybe or beyond, then that episode still will forever hold that weight. Whereas, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes shows do like a, a, a Fugazi, like, Oh my God, they're, they're never going to see each other again. Then the next episode, I oh, was just kidding. There they are together. Yeah. So I, I, I really liked Mando in this episode. Um, I know that he felt a little bit like he was just kind of moving the story along, but I think as, as Lacey pointed out, it's more than just the end, uh, setting up the end of the two choices. Like he had to give him the gift. That's true. But he also had to set up the end in the sense that um, if like we had to see Mandalorian show up and be honest about his attachment and Ahsoka being like, you're still attached to the kid, aren't you? Are you doing this for him? Are you doing this for you kind of thing? And he had to go through all that and him making the decision to be able to say, okay, you give him the gift, make sure he gets this. It's his decision. I'm letting him go again. And he flies off without actually going to see him. Like that is a process that we had to be aware of. And we had to kind of think to ourselves, could I go through that? Would I make the same decision for someone that I cared about. And then we are then put in the position of seeing Grogu have to kind of make a similar decision. Do do you care enough about this life or are you still attached to this other thing? Kind of, kind of, and I think it all, it all sets up. And I really liked, uh, and it's not much that, you know, you ever get to say this, but I actually really enjoyed his voice acting in this. I felt, I felt like all the lines were very believable every time he was like, but I've, come all this way you know like yeah yeah you know certain certain ways that he just said certain lines it really felt like i was in it with him like is there a person around here a human person i I, you know i I could be doing so many other things but all i want to do is this one thing this one simple thing and going through the whole process (laughs) and not even getting to do that thing because you have now come to terms with how important it is that you don't actually go through with what you came to do. Right. Um, I don't know. I, I felt like a, a lot of that was very strong storytelling. Uh, and it didn't just feel like uh, he, he, you know, you have to show him going to drop off the piece so that you technically, so that, you know, I was like, all that process worked for me a hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, I think he did a really good job of the voice acting, especially there, because like you can see and feel that struggle and you can't even see his face. You know what I mean? Yeah, but man. Still conveys yeah. that and gets that across. Like, a, it was sad, like, but you I had, get like, it. Push you know? in shot where he's making the decision and I'm like, I'm looking at a helmet right now and I feel <laughs> every bit of it. <laughs> you know, yeah. right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Andy, what do you think? Where, where Are you leaning one way or the other for Grogu in terms of like, well, what you think he's going to do or and what you want he, him to do? Yeah, I. so the reason I think he's going to go back with Mando uh, is because he is like kind of the star of the Mandalorian. You know what I mean? Like he was the breakout star of that whole thing. And also Luke's line about it's not so much I'm training him. It's more he's remembering how to do this stuff. Like he already knows how to do a lot of this. That's and a great he's, point. Because he blocked out his memory before. So I feel like maybe his training was further along than we thought. I mean, he is 50 years old, right? So I feel like maybe he might not really need all that training and he's, you know, pretty advanced for how small he is. And or he could be more, more trained than Luke, like you're saying, maybe. Yeah, it could be. I mean, I mean, and like, yeah, but if not for Luke saying that, because I was like wondering, I was like, how are they going to get him back with Mando so soon? Right. Because he's training, right? So, but the, so that line for me right there is like, that's exactly why they said that. Like, yeah, he is better than we thought. He knows more than he let on, or just now, you know, remembering it because Luke did the whole the memory thing. Like, let me let me see your memories. Like, do you want to remember? And, and that so, that was crazy too, because then we're just like shot right into the Revenge of the Sith, mm-hmm. but a different 
uh, layer of the onion of it, and like we get a different vantage point from a from that that moment. Like because we've seen Order sixty six in Resistance or not Resistance, but uh, Clone Wars, uh, uh, a lot of different Bad Batch. Things. Yeah, uh, bad Jedi batch. Fallen order. Yes. Yeah. Right. Bad batch. So many is the one I probably thought of. Yeah. Yeah. And now we're getting another perspective of it. Uh, it's just Can... like adds layers and 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 a realism to that moment in in the story. Crazy. Can we go back to that? I I want to I want to go back to the decision really quick because I, I think that's I think that's a really interesting topic of discussion. Andy gave his opinion on which way he thinks he's going to go. Uh, Lacey, which way? Do you think he's going to make a decision? Because because I have a I have a very strong feeling that I I know what's going to happen here. But I think that uh, Grogu is going to pick the Mandalorian. I think that attachment is there. I also think that on the level of like writing and story, they want him to be with the Mandalorian. His ship has that little porthole already that you're like clearly he's going to be sitting in that at some point this episode or in uh, the next yeah. series of the Mand- mm-hmm. next season of the Mandalorian. Um, I think that there's been a lot of discussion around what's going to happen with Luke's Academy and Grogu, especially the moment he left with Luke. It's like, oh, does that mean he died in the Academy? Where was he when that happened? I think this eliminates that conversation because if he doesn't go with Luke, then he's not at the Academy. It was never a question. Um, And I think that more than that, I think in this episode, especially you see how traumatized Grogu is from The whole situation at the Jedi Temple, he's still having issues with it. He still can't get past that stuff mentally, and he's, like, blocked it out, Um, which, honestly, is something humans do in general. If you go through a traumatic situation, you Mm -hmm. tend to black out the pain, and and not just mentally, but physically sometimes. Like, you won't remember certain things that were traumatic to you, so he's going through, like, PTSD with that. And you see kind of Luke getting frustrated or unsure of himself because he can't get past those moments that... Grogu feels unsure yeah. of himself. And I think that's what's going to drive him to go back with Mando, which feels so safe and secure and comforting that he's going to want to go back to that because, I mean, he's his dad. He's so, like, James, I, I think I have a feeling which way you're leaning on this. I'm with them. So let me just get mine out of the way. Mm-hmm. And then you can give your um, wrong thoughts. Um <laughs> <laughs> We do this. We go back and forth like this. Um, so Grogu, like he shows uh, dark tendencies sometimes, and you know we see him. Uh, well, well, Ahsoka said last season, like it's, it'd be dangerous to train him or something, and she didn't want to do it, and she said, well, you know, she was had hesitance to do that, and then he destroys the remote. He got fr- <laughs> so frustrated with it, he ended up destroying it, and who else that that, that has dark blood? And dark tendencies that we see destroy a remote, Ray. Uh, so that, like, I thought of Ray when I saw him destroy that remote. He's like, he got so frustrated with it, he just killed it and destroyed it. And the way Luke has that, uh, he, like, we, this is Luke Skywalker, the height of his like powers or like his ability. He's a realized Jedi. He uh, restored the Jedi, destroyed the Sith, the prophecy, all that. But he's still very naive and uncertain in his uh, decision making and he he definitely seems very uh a lot of trepidation in uh, wanting on what he should do he's sitting there asking ahsoka who doesn't know that well like what do you think like uh, what are your thoughts here and uh i i think you know for those reasons like he will go back with mando also hasbro is like oh my god this is amazing we get to make the n1 with the little thing and the yeah. Grogu sell, sell that for a billion dollars in three years well they just um, announced that they're doing on february 9th the, the latest announcements for toys so we will we will we'll see su- yeah oh, i won't hold quick, my breath on that one but yeah but, but my last point out. james my last oh, point. i was just just to sidestep okay uh expect a full scale the N1, the that oh, ship yeah. at celebration. <clears throat> yeah, I think so. Oh, the model, like a full size model. Yeah. I think you're gonna that they're gonna bring it and it's gonna be set up and you're gonna be able to like look at it. I'm gonna I'm gonna get up close. I'm gonna get a little Ben Solo here. We so, haven't talked uh, about the androids, by the way. Someone brought it up in the chat. That is that yeah. was a cool yeah, they were thing. cool. Oh yeah. Um I think androids. I think Grogu going with Mando, Luke is going to have some like regret about that and him saying like i should have trusted my gut I, maybe i should have trained him why do i doubt myself the jedi aren't supposed to do that that will push him to train ben solo even though he may sense 
similar tendencies with him. He'll say, I let Grogu go. I should have trained him. I'm going to follow through with it with Ben Solo. I think that, that that's something that they could explore. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so I am going... I'm going the other way. <laughs> you guys have all good arguments. Um, and I understand too, that it is like, it's hard to argue against the realistic, like Mandalorian and Grogu, their team that, that is the show. That combination is what works. What I think is going to happen is Grogu is going to choose the lightsaber. And then for but they're not going to show us right later in the, the season in later seasons, for whatever reason, uh, Grogu is going to end up back with the Mandalorian and that's going to be fine. And he's going to have his lightsaber and we're going to know what, you know, kind of went down. But I think there's going to be a moment where they pull the grief cargo thing where something happens to the baby and they reveal that he has the armor as well. And he has been wearing the armor. And then we're going to realize what happened in the moment with Luke. Grogu is going to choose the lightsaber and it's going to be a test. And Luke's going to give him the armor anyway. Yeah. I kind of mm. think he'll get both no matter what <laughs> in that's, a way. <laughs> that's my thought is that somehow he's going to end up with both. And if he chooses the Mandalorian armor, he fails Luke's test. But if he passes the test and decides that he can abandon that, that mm. connection, then then he's already made that decision. And so the armor isn't going to uh, uh, it isn't going to keep his mind there. He's already made that decision. Are you so saying I that think... he's going to Doc Brown it and wear the bulletproof vest after the fact before he gets shot? I think it's I think <laughs> this is more like a Kingsman type situation where you're supposed uh... to uh, you're supposed to have the dog raise the dog. And then the final test is you're supposed to shoot the dog and they're testing to see if people pull the trigger when they do pull the trigger, then you realize that, or that person realizes it was a blank mm. and they get to keep the dog as well, but it was a test to see if they would do it. Mm. I think Luke's test is so, seeing if he would choose the Mandalorian and it, when he doesn't, he can go ahead and keep the armor. Cause it's not about that. It's about the choice. So Andy, let, let me ask you, cause we've all kind of given varying points here um you think if he has both is that because of your thought that he is remembering do you think he will fully remember like a lot of ability uh to I, the point where he has it already and it's going to be fully realized yeah i feel like his training was way more than anyone thought and he just blocked all that out so that that's the other thing though if he does get both like are we sure he knows how to handle a lightsaber <laughs> but i mean we <laughs> saw what been, Din did with the dark... multiple jedis yeah yes i mean and we saw what did then yeah. uh with the you know the dark saber and just cut his leg uh so yeah. you, you don't want something like that to happen but i don't know i mean to bring yoda saber back is pretty a pretty big deal and yeah. for him to not end up with that in some way, it's kind right, of right. like a waste because who else is going to use that? You know? <laughs> like, yeah, because right. it's like this big. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Um. So yeah, I don't know. I think he might. I think he'll get both no matter what. But they're gonna have to throw in something like he. Don't worry, he can handle himself with a lightsaber. <laughs> and you know that that was kind of a cool parallel moment in the same way that Obi Wan was like your father wanted you to have this when you were old enough. And he gives mm -hmm. Luke his father's lightsaber. Then Luke got to be that. He gets to be like, Oh yeah. my God, it's my turn. It's my turn to be Obi-Wan. Yeah. yeah. Hey Grogu, here's your, here's my, here's Yoda's lightsaber. You know, it's a, that's a very uh, close and cool parallel seeing Luke be able to be the Obi-Wan mm -hmm. uh, in like a live action Star Wars show in 2000 freaking 22. It's insane. Yeah, this is a good point from Galactic Curator, a.k.a. Kendall. What up, Kendall? He said Luke did say he felt that he wasn't really training Grogu much, just helping Grogu remember training he had had. Yeah, that's kind of what Andy was saying before. It's yep. it's such a good point. And it like like you say, like who knows how deep they go with it or how far, yeah. if they made the decision yet on how much he knows, like you said, Andy. So, yeah, like, so let's, let's jump back, sorry, to the, the, the flashback then. Because we started going down that path, and I pulled this out of it. Um, do do like what? What are we thinking about the flashback as far as like 
Yeah, it was interesting they left it off right there. You know, like they're coming at him. Uh, yeah. You know, the are, uh, <clears throat> which is really cool to see them back in action, by the way. But so someone has to step in or is he going to save himself? You know, like, because, I mean, we saw him lift up, you know, whatever that freaking rhino thing was, you know, like he's strong, but does someone step in and help him out or does he do it on his own? And, but it, like, I feel like someone has to step in. Cause if he does it on his own, like, does he, where does he go after? You know what I mean? How does he know where to go? Like, I feel like they're already hiding, you know? Um, so yeah, I'm interested to see how that plays out, but I think we're going to see more of that. What if now a lot of people have been hoping for this character to return. This is a nice compromise get Samuel L. Jackson back, have him be the one that saved Grogu, de-age him. You don't have to retcon his death and bring him back post his death. You could have him do one last awesome thing before he goes to face Palpatine. I think the, the timeline would fit that because he confronted him after the big slaughter, right? So, um, or around that time anyway. Does he? I thought he did it before. Or he, or no, yeah, you're right. He does order right, it. Because then it. he orders Anakin to oh, go take care him. of it. Never mind. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I guess they got to. I guess uh, they they got to uh, reverse his death then. I guess so. So two things just popping around. I want to throw it out there too. Is that um, my initial thought on who that was? Uh, there's a particular Jedi. There's two that are very clearly like robed, and it's like I think they're just trying to hide those people. They're just extra Jedi. But there's one that isn't, and I was like looking at his hair, and I was trying to understand maybe his age. Uh, or even that it was a guy. There was like an, uh, a first thought that I was thinking it was like the librarian or something. And I was like, that's what I thought too. I was like, who are we looking at right here? And um, I, I I had a particular Jedi in mind and I, I looked it, uh, it up and it's Sin Drawlig. And it turns out that that character actually has kind of something to do with how that would make sense. Um, he was in charge of like lightsaber training. And I was like, oh, that's interesting that that character would be uh, lightsaber training because part of why I looked it up, too, was um, I, I was trying to figure out what when go or not Goku. Sorry, when Luke, yeah. well, I was mixing Go-Gurt. Luke and Grogu and it came out Goku. And I'm like, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, when he was doing his like lightsaber moves, I was like, does anybody, has anybody said if that's like form whatever? And I saw somebody say that it was form five, which is what Anakin uses. I can't recognize that stuff. So don't hold me to that. But then looking up the James, forms and stuff, this guy got Sorry. brought up. What? He was killed by Vader, according to Wikipedia. Yeah. Um, in the hollows, when Obi-Wan's watching that, I th- I'm pretty sure he mows him down. Um, Anakin does. We're striking out on our theories here. <laughs> I love that. By the way, like a step above this, I love that we're that nerdy that we're like, well, if you look on this thing and then you go I, back, and you look that's, at this to be thing. fair, that's I love it. I, love I it. saw someone say that earlier, and but they were like, well, it couldn't be him unless they retcon it because it's like, but also like, I don't know if they they never say his name, obviously. So it's like, are we sure it's just not two guys with a similar hairstyle and it still could be that guy? Like, well, they they did that from they killed off a character in Attack of the Clones, and then they brought her back in Revenge of the Sith, and then they were like, oh shoot, and then they just like renamed the character. Yeah, and it's like, oh, those characters look exactly the same. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they just well, it did like- that. Grogu but, was in something, by the way. Obviously, they were doing it to flashback because they had like the fuzzy outside. But even then, it looked like he was like in something because he had like the the maroon blanket and also. also sorry, real quick, that mm-hmm. um, the fuzzy flashback effect. I'm pretty sure that's what we saw when Padme was dying. When um, oh, oh yeah, it was like the same. You know, when he sees her like struggling. You know, oh um, yeah. Good it call. was almost that same exact visual effect, so it's kind of cool to to use that. Yeah, there. when Anakin was like having those dreams, the dreams, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I didn't catch that. Way to go! Wow. Hmm. It's so. I mean, it just goes to show, like you said, Lacey, like how nerdy we're getting on it. And for an episode this loaded, um, we're really pressing the speculation button hard on that. And it's yeah. Uh, who knows how much of that story they tell us? I'm good either way. I'm d- I'm mm-hmm. down to find out. I'm also down for it to be a mystery for a long time. But being for the, for the sake of time, let's f- uh, try to have some speculation on what happens next week. There's only see. one episode left. Can we take a second? There is yeah. one episode left, and they have to tie up all this stuff and or leave us hanging with a bunch of stuff. So I'm yeah. interested mm-hmm. to hear what you guys think is going to get solved. What's going to be left hanging? 
what yeah. are we expecting? Because so, everything Andy, I thought has been thrown out the window with this yeah, episode. Yeah. Get, guest of honor, uh, probably looking for a little more of Boba Fett. Where where you where are we going on uh, chapter seven? And do you think um, it's going to be like a long chapter? you think we're looking at an hour? I, I think it kind of has to be a longer one. Like, yeah. really, it has to. I mean, they, they needed more muscle. Now they have it in a way, some of it at least. Um, I think we're going to really see the Freetown people. Yeah, which they need to show a little bit of like how they're going to accept going into the war. We're free town now. Yeah. <laughs> also, I loved how they're like, you know, it's Screw not your problem now, down. but it might be later. And immediately it's his problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think we're going to see Boba do Boba Fett stuff. And I want to see the jet pack. You know what I mean? I want to see him just go all out and be like, OK, you know, he was he was that cool all along. You know, and he's just been holding back a little bit. Uh, I mean, they have to, though. I mean, if it's going to be a war and like when Mando said, oh, I may be able to help get more muscle, you know, I thought he was going to go to Bo-Katan and them. Like, I, did, I didn't know, didn't think of him going back to Cobb Vanth. Um, so I was like, but I think, I mean, the town just saw that happen. Like their leader get mowed down in the street by this mysterious guy who looks evil and sounds evil. So I think that's definitely what sparks them. That's why that was there. But yeah, I think it's going to be crazy no matter what, but I think we're really going to see Boba shine in the last <clears> final <throat> episode. I think like him having two episodes off gives some breathing room and then you get to see him, you know, flip that switch and just be back to his old ways and being the bounty hunter, you know, put that helmet I, on and get to work. Yeah, I saw a quick one there of all the, the speculation, like one that I was like, <laughs> oh, that makes sense is a Boba Cad Bane sh showdown which is oh, like yeah. something that Filoni wanted to do and it never ended up happening. So it's like, maybe that's part of the reason he's bringing this back in. Cause he wants these two characters to have this final confrontation because they've already had all this history. Uh, so that could be kind of interesting. I, um, that, and that's there, but do, I, like, I don't know. What are you guys' thoughts on? Do you think this really is one episode and we're going to be like the whole war is going to happen? Or do you think they're going to be like, um, something that just says, man, Mando season three is going to be nuts. Like it all builds to something that cuts off. There's no way they can close it all down and, and yeah. end it all. Like they're saying the war is coming and we're still going to like, it's like, you know, Game of Thrones season eight. They're like, oh, the, the war is coming. And then the one episode, like the whole war happened and like the rest of the season was like, what? Like that yeah, was it? That was, was that it. One episode. <laughs> so I don't think they're going to do that. Of, yeah. There is a lot of Kira and Han Solo chat in the chat. Yeah, yeah. We so we talked he, about this a lot running. on this show. Uh, Andy, do you think uh, Crimson Dawn's in the mix, or you think that's uh, another sort of like speculation I, red herring? I think that's something later. I mean, like the syndicate, this is the sorry, the Pikes and the Syndicate have become such a thing now. It's kind of pointless in a way to bring in some some other organization that is higher than them in the hierarchy or something. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, like. I lost my whole train of thought. I was just thinking about Han everything Solo. that has to happen. In the Han yeah. Han Solo. Yeah. I, I don't think we'll see him at least not now. Like I feel like seeing Luke was a treat, you know? Yeah. And I feel like if they bring Han, it kind of cheapens that in a little way. It's like, yeah. well, we can't bring everyone back. Like I yeah. was really surprised. We saw Luke. Honestly, I didn't think we we're going to see him at all this season. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I really doubt Han Solo will be in it. I feel like that's a little too much of a stretch but <laughs> i i think um, he is gonna show up actually i really so? do i, I mean i wouldn't that... be disappointed if he did like... no no absolutely i think yeah, so Lacey, yeah, what are you, where, what's happening in this episode go for it well i don't know what's gonna happen i just think that han solo is gonna show up because i've been saying this forever but it's like you can't have boba fett without han solo han solo put him in the sarlacc pit like even if it's just like a cameo or a quick glimpse or a mention or something like you can't go this whole series without mentioning Han Solo. And they have this whole relationship rivalry that was built up during the original trilogy anyway, that you're going to tell me that he's not mentioned once. That's true. Not once. <laughs> and I Do really guys... believe that Kira and Crimson Dawn is playing a bigger part in all of this. They might get a mention in this and not we might not see them. And maybe it's building into what is happening with Mando, you know, season three. Um, I would not be surprised if, you know, from our understanding here on TRB and like what some of the actors and stuff have said is, and John Kasdan, who wrote Solo, is that they had plans for bigger stories within the syndicates 
So I wouldn't be surprised if they're taking elements from those stories and putting them into this Mandalorian story and then building it into this whole intricate thing where you have all these characters that are playing into this bigger war because they need a big thing that's going to happen. And obviously the empire's gone, so they need something in that right now is what's creating this big bad is these, yeah, these little, syndicates. There's a lot of moving parts and we, you know, we still forget about the, the cloning stuff that's going on behind the scenes um, with uh, the, via the Mandalorian and what they were trying to use Grogu for. Like I almost forgot about that. Uh, there's so many moving parts. And if this is really 2.5, then it has to be cliff hang cliff hung right into Mandalorian season three. And maybe like you say, branch out into Ahsoka and stuff like that. So I, I really, I'm with you guys. I don't think this is going to be one of those things like, this now the war's here and we're it's going to be settled right here and we're going to put a bow on this and then like say mando tag you're back in because i wouldn't be surprised if they even do i hope they don't do this for all star wars stuff like marvel does but because this is a segue back to mando if there is like a post credits thing uh to say like this is where we're headed with mandalorian season three and it's like bo katan being like possessed and obsessive over the dark saber or something or, or give us something to to get our appetite going for something fresh heading into mando season three but there's a lot they still there still is a lot that they have to do in this episode but andy when, when it, you're right when it comes down to the bare bones of it i want to see boba fett doing boba fett things yeah i'm yeah. all about lore i'm all about world building i'm all about themes great storytelling but i also want to see boba fett uh earn this show and and and, and, and come full circle yeah and he's fully healed now you know what i mean and we haven't yeah. seen, seen him do anything since that they're like congratulations True. Fully healed okay what can he do now like maybe that's why they kind of like let let him lay in the weeds a little bit for two episodes and then we're like mm -hmm. we're in boba fett and then like you said chapter seven he just just goes balls to the wall just goes yeah crazy i, I want to see a point where he's flying over taking dudes out and mando even kind of looks up but i'm like okay this dude's another level of that life. would i would get <laughs> chills man for yeah. sure yeah, that's that's the one thing that I would say, like, I've seen a lot of cr that criticism of the and we kind of loosely talked about it a little bit. The whole the show's called The Book of Boba Fett. And we got an episode of The Mandalorian. Ha ha ha. And then the next episode is like, seriously, he didn't even say anything. He's like standing there, doesn't say anything. So I, I, I do think that what they were doing is they were using these episodes just to, so that they don't have to do them in Mandalorian season three, but so that it connects and it explains where Mando's been and what he's been doing and why he's now in this fight and how the Freetown people got involved and all that other stuff. But that the last episode to me feels like it's very much going to be the final book of Boba Fett in this season. And it's it, these two episodes were just, uh, side note, really quick before we get to the finale, this is what else was going on. Okay, cool, you're caught up. Boom, now here's your finale. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I think you guys are right. I don't think we're gonna see the all out war. We got to see something. We got to see them like try to make a move, and he like totally owns them. And then you get the guys that are running back, and he's like, "Yeah, you tell him to stay away." But of course they won't. You know. Yeah. I, Will I, someone I mean, die? That's the question. Not a main character, I don't think. Obviously, yeah. outside of the deputy and the whole people, everyone in the sanctuary, because that yeah, was like, I mean, like, people, I don't think, but I don't think like Black Chrysanthemum or Fennec Shand or Boba Fett or I don't think any of these like main characters are going to die. Maybe the weak way bartender. Maybe that's why he's been there. And he's had, he had more <laughs> lines out. This episode. <laughs> and, <freaked> out now. <laughs> yeah. So maybe, um, maybe. All right. Not. So before we get out of here, I uh, know, Lacey, we have a couple more super chats we wanted to get to, right? Oh, yep. good. Yeah. So first up, we have Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Thanks for the super chat. Who thanks, said, will bud. Grogu unite the Mandalorians and the Jedi, but becoming both for the first time since Tar Vizsla? Tar Vizsla. Yeah. Tar and I, I, this is, this is kind of like my, my, my stance. I think I had last week is I'm thinking that Grogu is someone that could balance that. And that's kind of the, the direction that they're yeah. leading. Like, Oh, let's teach you about the Jedi. But isn't that also kind of like or different from the Mandalorian way? And how could a person? But then they're also very clearly telling you that there was a person who was both at one point, the mm. originator. So right. it's like it does seem it does seem very possible that both that Grogu <laughs> shouldn't have to make a decision. And in the old Jedi way, uh, Luke may have said this decision stands, but the in the new jedi way the new way luke wants to teach it he can say choose one 
And because you made that choice, you get the reward of getting the other one as well. You can be both. Yeah, and the whole attachment thing, I feel like that's kind of impossible because, I mean, look how close Obi-Wan and Anakin were. Like, that's an attachment yeah. right there. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, they're best buds. And, like, you know, father, son, brother figure, like, yeah, you're going to have some attachment. Like, you're, you're you know, black for a better term, human. You know, like, you're going to have those feelings and stuff and be close to someone. Like, right. yeah. I feel Obi-Wan like it's a big a ask. Teacher. Yeah. It'd be, weird. It'd be really weird to see Grogu with the Darksaber, though. So, a mini one, a tiny one, a tiny dark saber. Maybe yeah. he makes it. Well, um, it it change it. Does it not also change size depending on the person using it? It might. I have no uh, idea. However, we have a new, another super chat. It's oh, cool. the kind of vacans. It's hey, kind Mark. Duh underscore kind underscore awakens. Hey Mark, he said, I think the choice is ultimately a fake out, and Grogu won't have to choose between being a Jedi and a Mandalorian. Luke is growing beyond the Jedi code. He's just testing little Grogu. I have to say, I was very kind of confused a little bit watching this episode with Luke because there were these moments that he's like, Well, you can't form attachments. And I was like, first of all, I got depressed because I was like, I know what's coming. <laughs> I know what's coming in the future. But then there was this moment I was like, wouldn't he want to do something beyond what the Jedi did and, and not just remake it? So I guess that's he's at that moment of where we meet him in the, the last Jedi where he's like, oh, I had this, you know, hubris that I was a master Jedi and I knew what was he, right. And Yeah, he right now he's like what, you know, they might say, like he's on fire for the religion. Like and he like sure. he totally believes it and he totally is going to put everything into what does this book say? That's the way I got to do it. And that's young Luke. And it's good right. in return of the Jedi, because when you, when you have that principle and you have that stance and you have that rock and you stand on it, it can be big and it can make right. move people. But the thing is, is like, can you stand on that rock all the time? Can a person, can an individual or anything or any sort of uh, community really be that all the time? And I think that's kind of one of those things like Luke wants to believe in the Jedi, but when you, when you're learning more and more and more about it, it, you start to go like, and some of this stuff doesn't really work. Some of these, you know, it turns out like I thought the Jedi were really crazy. That's how I always pictured my father, you know, but like, now I'm kind of learning more about the Jedi and it, and it kind of falls apart. I think what we're seeing here is Luke uh, wanting to be gung ho about the Jedi and following it to the letter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, Can't he wonder what Ahsoka said though. I yeah. I mean, I feel like that, like maybe he and was Ahsoka like, you know, knows that, you know, yeah, she's already, he's like, he's already a little bit past that, but she's and like, maybe it's Luke's story. And maybe she told him, you know, what happened to your father was attachment. That's why he had his downfall, you know? So, mm, I mean, right. she's there. And it's also kind of weird. Like, he's like, am I going to see you again? Feels a little bit like attachment there, Luke. I don't know. Maybe we should right. just let her do her own thing. So, yeah, I want to feel like he's past that. But if he's not, maybe she spoke to him. Like, here's what happened to your father, you know, like. And there's still that tinge of youthful, naive Luke there uh, saying like, like, like saying to the, you know, uh, driving instructor, like, can you still hold on to the wheel just in case I screw up here as I'm trying to get my driver's uh, driver's license? It's just that that he's like, you know, we'll see you again, right? Like, uh, I may need to check in just to make sure <laughs> yeah. I'm going down the right path here. Um, but then, you know, as we've seen The Last Jedi, he tells us that he had this confidence and, 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 and he saw the mighty Skywalker blood and stuff. And it wasn't until he failed Ben Solo that he uh, went against the... the the mm -hmm. dogma of the Jedi and stuff. So he like, I agree with James in that sense where he's sort of all in still unsure of himself, but all in on, and believing, you know, the, the code of the, of the Jedi. All right. And we have one more super chat from Dave Hornack, AKA Indy Dave. Uh, Dave? Dave. And he nice said, Dave. thanks for bookending a great day today. TRB oh, wow. gang. Thank what you way, so man. much, Dave. It was a great day. I think this was one of those days that as a Star Wars fan was just so exciting because everybody was on the same page that this was just such an epic episode. There yeah. was something for every type of fan in this episode. Original trilogy, prequels, animated, you know, just Mandalorian. Comics. But, yeah, comics. It was I insane. may watch it again before I go to bed. That's what I was yeah. just going to say. Like, all right, I'll see you guys. I'm going to go watch it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So, I mean, that's a good place to end it, I think. Sure. Um, and I love the fact that we speculated the hell out of chapter seven and we were all over the place. There were so many different things that could happen. Uh, we don't know. And that's what makes it really exciting. And it should be 
uh, at least a, a hell of a fun time. And I know there's certain things that I think I know are going to happen. Uh, and I'm excited to see Boba Fett back. And, and like you said, Andy, do some Boba Fett things. Back but um, before we get out of here, Andy, um, I don't, you know, I'm sure a bunch of our audience uh, knows of you, but for them who do not, uh, let them know. Plug away. Let them know about oh, your band, yeah. your Twitch, what you got going on. Plug away, dude. Yeah, um, I'm the lead vocalist for a band called Danger Kids. Uh, it's like a metal, not super heavy, but I don't know. Somewhat, we have a couple albums out, Spotify. You can listen to them for free on YouTube, <laughs> even all that stuff. Uh, I also stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Andy Banana. I do that probably like five or six days a week. So uh, that's pretty much what I do in my free time. So Hey, man, t- tell them about uh, the stuff you've done with uh, Sonic. Oh, yeah, yeah. So cool. Uh, so we did the theme song for the villain in the last Sonic game, Sonic Forces. Oh my uh, gosh. Nice. So it's called Theme of Infinite. Um, that's what a lot of people know us from too. Uh, which was like, you know, little kid me getting to do something like always yeah. thought about, you know, like a, a character I knew when I was, you know, five years old and I got to do something in that universe. Uh it's that, so that's cool like too, one of the coolest that song, things. I've done. That song is so sonic and it's so danger kids. Like, yeah, I it is. It. I, I was I was pumped when we got that offer because I was like, what if we do the song for a villain? Because that fits us more, you know, like it's a little heavier mm-hmm. and stuff. So and that's ended up being what I mean, it you, was. You guys are the blacklist. So, yeah, that's true. We are. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, well, thank you for being with us. We want to uh, thank everybody who will join us live. Uh, if you're listening to this on uh, audio, that's cool, too, because every time we put out these streams. Uh, it stays on the channel, and we also hit all of your audio podcast feeds. Make sure you're also going to Star Wars News Net for all of your Star Wars news every day. Uh, Patreon.com slash Resistance Broadcast. This show uh, does not happen uh, if it isn't for your support. So thank you to everybody who supports us over there. Tears start at $2 a month. Uh, we really appreciate it. We have a lot more coming. We're going to be covering all the shows that are coming out and a lot more uh, as the year goes on. A special thank you to our generals and spice runners. Our generals, Carmelo, Andrew Staley, Jeremy Myers, John Reese, Jetta Rosewater, Paul Olson, Oliver Lewis, Frank Grande, Darth Hurricane, John Charlton, Nick Kratz, Chris Morales, Brian Smith, Matt Chitty, Nathan Shank, Danny, Mike Ramore, Matt Heath, and Val Trichkoff, and Spice Hunters. David Probus, Neil Shaw, Double C Chris, Kendall Gellnar, Ryan Warr, Dave Hornack, Micah Harrison, Thomas Hennessy. Thank you all for all of your support. Next week, Chapter 7. February 9th, 9 p.m. East, right here, youtube.com slash Star Wars News Net Videos. We'll be doing it. And given the final number in the Mando code, given that away, it's going to be a great show. We really look forward to having you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey and Star Wars News Net.com. Lacey. People could find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lacey Gillerin. And if you want to see my initial reaction from the episode today, you can see mm-hmm. it right on the YouTube channel here, the Mando Minute. Yes. And James. Uh you can find me on <laughs> coffee choking on water, apparently. Um <laughs> you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Myra Trunks. All right. Andy, dude, this was a blast. It, it oh. was so seamless, a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Yeah, we have to have you back on, on uh, our regular pod sometime in the future. Any, any, I'm serious. Anytime, let me know. I love doing this stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks a lot, man. And again, thanks again to everybody. We'll see you next week, and of course Monday on TRB. It will be our 500th episode of the Resistance broadcast. Uh, just, yes. I can't believe it that that uh, the three of us are still getting along and doing this sort of thing, but here we are. So here's the 500 more, but until next time, as always from the three of us, four of us, we'll see you around kids. Have a good night, everyone.